So who is Matt Gray? Matt Gray was born on the 23rd of January 1967 in Yorkshire. He started his budding career as a camera operator, progressing to the role he is in now, which is a cinematographer and DOP. Matt has worked on a variety of different programmes, from Virgin Media campaigns to BBC's most recent drama, Liar. He has won an award for Online Film and Television Award for Best Cinematographer for his work in Sherlock back in 2010. This year, he has also been nominated for Royal Television Society West Television Award for his work in The Living and the Dead. Matt has a certain style about him. When setting up for a scene or adding suspense, he will use the use of shadows and reflections to help enhance the overall appearance of the action. This is to create suspense and intrigue within the programme without having to use any dialogue. You can see this in his most recent work in Broadchurch. One of Matt Gray's more popular TV roles as DOP was on the first two episodes of Broadchurch Series 1, which broadcast in 2013 and won 17 Academy Awards. In the opening of the first episode, there's a great establishing shot showing Mark walking down the street introducing most of the main cast and the characters and establishing the town and its layout. What's so great about this shot is that it is a continuous shot and it follows Mark down the street and through the shops without any cuts. It's interesting in terms of camera techniques as there is a lot going on within the scene that the camera must avoid and try and stay on track with Mark. It helps to give the scene a more detailed and intimate view of the town and it's a continuous shot really gives this feel. The movement also limits what you can do with the lighting, so you can't have large lights following the camera around. This movement also limits what you can do with lighting, as you can't move large lights around with the camera. So natural lighting will be something that the scene has to rely on, affecting the time of day you'll be able to shoot, especially since this is meant to be set early in the morning, and filming at this time may not have been optional. The scene where we explore Donnie's bedroom is not lit how you might think, considering the tone and the subject matter of the programme. The scene's very brightly lit, including elements of natural light through the window, which includes a warm, sunny glow. The bright lighting coupled with a shallow depth of field gives the scene a soft and somewhat heavenly glow to it. This may seem out of place, but it serves a purpose, which highlights the boy's innocence, making the scene all the more devastating. This lighting technique is used throughout the episode, and another good example is when Mark goes to see Danny's body for the first time. Taking place in a hospital, it would have made sense to make the scene cold and clinical, with uh, cooler colour temperatures and bluer colours. Again, there is a presence of a soft and heavenly glow, which perhaps is used as a visual motif to where Danny has gone, as his body is hardly shown within the scene, at least not in detail. Matt used light creatively to show the audience what the camera did not. I'll be analysing the show The Secrets, the return episode. The Secret is a series of standalone dramas that are based on a secret. Matt Gray consciously picks his lighting and camera shots to set a mood that creates a high level of anticipation that leads up to the reveal of the secret. And in the opening scene, we watch the police officer approach a door. He is in natural light at what appears to be evening. As a result of the natural light, there are dark shadows that are casted. This creates an eerie feel. During the scene, the camera stays focused on the character, making it seem as if the character is being watched. In particular, this shot. We view the character through the bushes, again making us feel as if he is being watched. Eventually it becomes an over the shoulder shot as the character knocks on the door. The cinematography has the audience watching in anticipation, waiting for the secret to be revealed, despite the happy music track in the background. When the character enters the house, the lighting becomes very bright. This then indicates to the viewer that the officer may be there for a different reason. The shot has no shadows, and this leads the viewer to think that everything is exactly how it should be. We then see two characters in the same shot, very up close, and the shot appears to be handheld. This shows their intimate relationship, well, to say the least. We are now presented with an over-the-shoulder shot of our character entering the door. The lighting here is very dark, and as it is shot inside a building, we know that this is deliberate. The character is trapped over the shoulder until he is out of view. We then see a slight pull focus to reveal who he's actually talking to. The atmosphere created by the cinematography and the script makes the viewer aware that something is about to happen and the equilibrium has changed. The camera is now looking towards a window. A shadow then appears in the window as a silhouette. 
again creating a fear of unknown for the viewer as we are unsure what is happening. The lighting changes and becomes warm as opposed to gloomy and eerie. The choice of cinematography has the viewer thinking that the two characters may know each other. Gray has a consistent style throughout a lot of his work as a cinematographer. One of these consistencies is his use of windows and door frames to frame his characters. This is to reveal characters to the audience or to reveal sinister intentions between interacting characters. This is seen in the cinematography for A Code for a Killer, One Child, Broadchurch and The Secrets. A look of loneliness or longing is the most common technique for this use of framing. Gray also uses wide lenses very frequently. He uses wide lenses to dwarf his characters in their surroundings, making them seem lonely and isolated. This can be seen in Broadchurch when David Tennant is sat on the beach and the hills and beach surround and engulf him as he sits contemplating the scenery he's used to convey his isolation. Much of Gray's cinematography is character focused. Often in his work, characters can be seen camera facing in a shallow depth of field. This was our presentation on Matt Gray. Thanks for watching. Bye! Bye. <laughs> How did I? I did the most loudest game. Bye. 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 <laughs>